It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This episode 1646, recorded Thursday, October 26th, 2017. That's a hella umbrella. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have three gadgets from the Luxury Gadget Show. Should be very nice and luxurious. My final Halloween crappy corner and a video from you all next on the Gizwiz! It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, frozen rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! now! It is time for the Gizwiz, and here he is, the maven of gadgets, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing fine, sir, and you? Doing great myself. It's been uh, nice to b be back. This is going to be like the first week where once the weekend starts, I'm not driving off to do something <laughs> crazy. Been yeah, like you've, been, you've, three you've weeks. been, I know, putting in the miles and Ooh. doing... Visiting yeah. presidents, and yeah, yeah, stealing stuff, talking loud in presidential libraries, and doing <laughs> exactly. all that. Exactly. Yeah, all interrupting people, reading books in libraries. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What is what is that weird bottle on your table? Oh, is, is that is that the new shape of Star Stream? <laughs> no, uh, of Soda Stream. Yeah, it is actually. Then yes, yes, this is Soda Stream. I got a Soda Stream about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Okay. And yeah, I've because the like bottles it. are different than my old soda stream. Yeah, they're they're a little. I don't know the. I don't remember the the old one. But yeah, yeah these ones are what they look like now. Are Very, these dishwasher safe yet? Uh, do not wash bottle in dishwasher or hot water. <laughs> okay. No. Or hot water. No, they're not. <laughs> I didn't know that about hot water. Well, whoops. Did, oh wow. <laughs> When when mold appears, please buy new bottle. <laughs> I've been putting warm water in it because I didn't trust that the washer would actually. So I haven't been using it in the dishwasher, which is good. I didn't oh, trust okay. that the washer would get in there. So I've just been filling it with oh, yeah. hot, soapy water and then just shaking it a lot for like oh, five minutes good. and then pouring it out. Oh, um, that's good. I didn't think. So I, I got a Keurig about a year ago. And it's nice. I use it every once in a while. You know, maybe on a weekend when I want tea. I don't drink a ton of coffee, so I'm not using it all the time. And I've been considering the soda stream, and the money doesn't quite work out to where it's not much cheaper unless if you drink a lot of soda. Like, if you're not... Because the bottles of, of uh, flavor are, end up to be ab about, like, 50 cents per liter or yeah. something like that yes. um and you can i can normally find a two liter of coke for a dollar fifty um or sometimes if you get a good one on sale for a dollar of for the two liter of coke so it doesn't and that's two liters this is one liter so works out to around 50 cents maybe a 75 if, if it's not on sale um so that didn't quite work out, but what I have been loving about the Soda Stream is one, I've been carrying it around like a normal bottle, which I don't think I don't think you're supposed to do. I don't think you're supposed to just carry it around and drink out of the Soda Stream <laughs> bottle. But I've been doing that. I don't care. Um, and then also, I've their um, Lacroix uh, look alike, or their Lacroix taste alike, whatever. Uh, Lacroix is just uh, seltzer with a tiny amount of flavor in it and I have been loving that um, and you can buy little glass bottles with flavor and you just put half a teaspoon in each uh, liter and it may it makes you realize that it's really just water I mean it's a liter a liter of water you put a few bubbles in it and then like the smallest amount of flavoring in it and then I'll drink like three liters of water that day because I'm just drinking basically water that's been carbonated so I really have been enjoying it and carrying it around wherever I go. Um, it's also made me want to like filter my water and and getting into all that stuff. I installed an under sink uh, water filter. Whoa! Yeah, that was really neat. You know, a lot of um, of uh, sinks have like an extra little hole 
for like, yes. sometimes you put a sprayer in there, sometimes you put a soap pump in there. And so I put a water filter in there. So I just hold it up there and it's filtered water that comes out. But yeah, I've been, yeah, I didn't think. No, Dennis, Dennis and I both I bought like soda it. streams because uh, two liters of soda here is like 250. Oh yeah. And, and well, one liter bottle of seltzer is a buck 29. So for us, it paid off rather quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me and, and again, like, uh, no no lugging bottles back. So that that's, that's awesome. the thing is that's what I really wanted to get rid of is um, I had been I had switched to buying two liters of of soda because I thought the cans were too much to recycle. You know, I luckily my area has recycling, so it all got recycled anyway. But it was kind of a pain in the butt. You had to put it into a separate bin. You had to make sure to carry it out to the curb. Um, and then I could also just see how many bottles I was going through and that's the energy to put it back into recycling. So that's what I was really hoping to cut down on. And that's been eliminated because I'm just using my own water from the tap, reusing this bottle over and over and over again. And the little flavor bottles last a lot of liters. So, um, that's been actually really, really nice. So I didn't know if I would like it. I was afraid it would be a little bit like the, the Keurig in that it sits there, it's nice, it's nice to have occasionally, but I'm not using it every day. But so far the soda stream has been something I've gone back to three times a day. Um, and so I've actually, I think that it, it's been a pretty good purchase. They run around $100 for the whole yeah, unit. So it, it's not a small thing to, to jump into. But I've, I've been enjoying it uh, a lot. As someone who likes seltzer also, if you want flavor all the time, if, you, if it needs to be soda all the time or a flavor of soda i don't know if most people economically it would work out um for someone who just enjoys cold seltzer water it's perfect it's so it's, so great. it is yep um let me think anything else that we need to update people on I don't know. uh no no, no. The, we're we're doing this thursday and next thursday yeah. i can't believe it we're like normal people normal <laughs> what people. is this October, the rain of October. October's always the worst month for me. I always tell my family or anyone, don't book anything in October. It's the worst month. I, I'm always doing something in October. So it's finally, finally coming to an end uh, with Halloween just next week. So yes. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the technology, the luxury technology show and that's fun because everything there is wildly expensive uh some of it is really ingenious but it's always fun stuff and i have three gadgets and we're going to start with a new car from canada called the, the solo and this is info on that Hey, Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Madness Rider, and the Gizwiz, One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're here with Sam, very noisy here, and we have a car called the Solo, and oh, wait a minute. I think I already know why it, it's the Solo, but Sam's going to tell us what it does, what it costs, and all that good stuff. Oh, thanks, Dick. First of all, thank you all for attending and watching. The Solo is made by Electra Mechanica. We're a Vancouver-based company that's been building cars in BC for more than 30 years. The Solo is our very first flagship electric vehicle. All battery driven, zero emission, and it's made in Canada. We're making our New York debut here. We're very excited to be part of the Wall Street Journal Luxury Tech Conference. And the best part is, it's available for 15.5 USD, and that's before EV rebates. You know what, do you know, are there any regulations? What? This isn't a car, this isn't a car. What's it classified as? Well, the classification matters state by state. In Canada, though, it is classified as a full vehicle. And we're going to be bringing it to the U.S. once we've completed our federal certification. And then from there, we're going to be delivering vehicles internationally. They are being ordered all across the world. And already there's over 20,000 orders for the Solo and 25,000 orders for our Tofino, which is our follow-up vehicle of a luxury model. Okay, now the, the object here, I assume, since it's for one person, is that you already have a car for the family and you want to do quick trips and errands and go shopping, that this would be the most economical way to do it. Is that about right? 
Dick, you have it exactly right. And I work at the company? No. <laughs> oh, well, what can you do? I mean, we could use a hype man. If you love the car, then you should really get involved because we're a small group, but we've just started listing on the OTCQB market. We're bringing the car internationally, and you're right. It's a car that is for people who, if they need a multi-seater, they probably already own one. But there's a much smarter, more efficient way to do the things you're doing with your car every day. Getting groceries, going to the gym. Well, speaking of groceries, what kind of uh, storage space do we have? Oh! oh. Like magic, it opened. That's, That's pretty right. cool. You said the magic words, storage space. <laughs> like most electric cars out there, we have a traditional back trunk, big enough for a carrying case for your dog, Costco groceries, everything else you might need. And if you follow me to the front, I can show you the front as well. Okay, so being an electric vehicle, the, the engine is where? Well, it's actually uh, motor-driven, all electric, and it's from the rear drive train. It's on the third wheel in the back which is why you have so much room to play with in the front trunk space here. When you don't have to worry about transmission, fluids, all the traditional internal combustion components, you have a lot more room to play with. That is great. Also, what I really love is that it's a brand new car just being introduced, and yet the trunk is a mess. It makes <laughs> me feel so much at home. That proves it's real, not just a concept <laughs> or a design rendering. It'll be in the marketplace, when do you, is your guess? The first cars are delivering in the BC area right now, and we expect to start U.S. deliveries in the near future. In the near future. Okay, I like this. Dick Bartolo, Mans, Madness Rider, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv, the luxury technology show. Bye. That's uh, pretty cool. We've seen a few of these, like, single rider cars before, and I, got, I gotta say I'm always intrigued when I see one because... It, it, there's so many little things that I feel like these type of cars would be perfect for. Like, I feel like they'd be perfect for uh, just getting around from, like, one place to another without getting the whole car involved. Um, I also, I want to see, and this is totally a pipe dream, and this is totally probably not what they're intending, but I want to see easily rentable cars where if I just want to oh. go from point A to point B, uh, and I'm maybe in a city that I don't know, quickly rent a car that is super inexpensive and get from one place to another, kind of like a bike share. Yeah, you know cool. what? I think there is one of those that operates in the city. Uh, it's by the hour, and I think you can pick it up at, like, any one of 25 garages yeah, and there's, leave there's it. Yeah, there's a thing called Zipcar that's yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah that, that's what I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, But the, still, um, like, Zipcar t is, I don't know. Yeah, I, guess, I guess that's as close as it gets to it. Um, it'd be cool if they were all like the same car and they, you oh, know, I, yeah. You tiny. mean like a city bike kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, after having paid $25,000 for an outboard motor, it almost seems like, wow, you get a whole car for $15,000. I know. I know. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, it seems also like, like a good idea. It's a, so the range is a hundred miles. That's so bad. probably perfect to get to and from work. Right. Uh, you can charge it. Uh, on 110 and 220, it recharges uh, in three hours if you're plugged into 220, and uh, six hours if you plug into 110. And one of the reports said it goes zero to 60 in eight seconds, which sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, that, that's pretty nice. That, 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 that's not bad. That's right? actually something uh, that a lot of electric cars have in common is because there isn't a big motor that needs to rev up in speed, an electric car is like a light bulb. <laughs> it's like, it's yes. on. It just yes. goes. Yes. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, anyway, and it, it's not bad looking. Um, you know, just go to their website for a minute. I, I put a link there because when you see it on the street, it, it does look like a car coming toward you, but then it looks a little weird. I, I think I think that car goes into motion. It does look a little strange when it passes by. It kind of looks like, hey, I think you forgot the rest of your car. It does. The way that last wheel is kind of hidden, you can yes. see the first portion. And you go, where did the rest of it go? <laughs> Absolutely. Is it three wheels? It is three wheel. Oh, that, that's what. That's why I asked him if it was. Is it uh, has a, a LCD uh, LED uh, dashboard? That's why I asked him. Is it a car? Because I'm not sure. I think in some places a three wheel vehicle is sometimes registered as a motorcycle. So yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> I don't. I'll anyway. be honest. Here's here's my honest impression. It's a great idea. It's inexpensive. But 15000 still isn't 
is isn't cheap enough for me to be like, okay, I'll get another car. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll just yeah. have another yeah. one around. You right. know, right. it's still a pretty big investment. I could get a golf cart for probably a, a few hundred. Oh, that's that'd, interesting. That'd be electric. But you can't take a golf cart. Or, I don't know if you could even drive a golf cart on city streets. Yeah, I think it might, maybe I I see them around my neighborhood streets, but uh, that's probably a little different than uh, actually like hitting downtown with a golf cart or anything like that. Um, yeah. And, and, and we, hmm. Dennis was pointing out, we're seeing more smart cars lately. Yes. You know, the smart car, that yeah. little, I don't, I don't know it's what a two seater and it yes. is, yeah. I believe I, I don't, they may have an electric version, but the one that I is in my head is, is a gas powered and it gets a ton of gas range. It gets like, I'm once again, this is all off the top of my head. So take it with a grain of salt. I think it's something like 45 miles to the gallon, something like that. Probably because you can pick it up and put it on the sidewalk if you exactly if you, you can park to. diagonally in a parallel parking you, spot yes you could just <laughs> yes just about you could put three of them in where uh, 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 a limo would go you could yeah. park three smart cars so yeah. anyway so, so it's, is, uh, something interesting yeah bleak in the chat room is saying based on smart car sales data this thing isn't gonna sell well because um it doesn't look like smart cars did so great in the market Although I have been seeing them around more often. It's, it hasn't become, uh, in the in beginning it was like, whoa, a smart car. And now I, I tend to see them enough that it's lost its uh, appeal as something brand new and, and different. Um, they're going to have, I think, a hard time making the sale. Although all the features are there. It's just such a small demographic yeah. of people that are yeah. going to want to spend that amount of money that are going to want an electric car that are going to want a single seater, you know? I know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All the best. Anyway. Yeah, yeah they, exactly. And, and they've been building cars for 30 years, so it's not like they sunk everything in the world into this. This won't this, sink so. the company. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so now if you don't want to spend 15000 on that, I have something you might want to spend 10000 <laughs> on. Uh, all right, so let's look at, uh, this is pretty neat. I would love to have this if I had a house. I guess I should also remember, this is the luxury show. So The luxury <laughs> technology, yes, exactly. exactly. Who's, who's yes, going to buy the this single-seater? Uh, the luxury that, market. Right. The luxury market. Okay, here's with the next video. Hey, Dick Bartolo, Mads Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz, One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're at the Luxury Technology Show. Do you know what heaven is? Well, I don't either, but I know what almost heaven is, and almost heaven is the authentic sauna experience. And Rick is going to tell us about this kind of amazing sauna that we're looking at. Thank you. Well, this is just one of uh, many different designs we make. We make both indoor and outdoor. This one is a barrel sauna. It's designed... uh, a barrel sauna? A... <laughs> okay. It's designed for outdoor use. Uh, the rain sheds off it very nicely. It can handle any sort of snow load. The thick, soft lumber makes it very energy efficient. In fact, when this sauna is 190 degrees inside, put your hand on the outside and you can barely feel the warmth. It's very well insulated. Uh, saunas are a very healthy product. They're uh, very good for uh, cardiovascular, uh, for circulation, for arthritis, sore joints, muscles, um, uh, respiratory, skin tone. So, Rick, what are we uh, using as a heat source? Uh, these are electric heaters, although certain models, you can have wood-burning heaters as well. And uh, the heater is powered by 220 volts. It allows the, heat, or the sauna to get up to 190 degrees if that's how hot you want it. You pour water on the rocks, creating steam. That makes it a wet sauna. Um, so it's just a delightful experience. Right. And uh, the retail price of this guy? This particular one is 9500 This hey, one has hey. digital controls, uh, a lot of different features, custom door, uh, roof kit, a lot of different parts to it that make it. And it comes as a kit. You put it together? Yeah, it's a partially assembled at the factory, so all the components are pre-made. Uh, you build it on site. Two people can build this sauna in half a day or less. And everything's included. Absolutely, the heater and everything. Well, what's the lowest price? Almost heaven yeah. sauna you make. We, we have saunas that start as low as twenty-five hundred, all the way up to twenty-five thousand. 
Wow. Sounds great. Dick DiBartolo, Mads Metis writer in the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. That's pretty, that's luxurious. I mean, that if is, you have yeah, a sauna it's, it's, at home, like, ooh, yeah. that's quite nice. And that, and that one is a six-person sauna <laughs> with a little front porch, and it, it's pretty neat. You'd have also, to find I, I excuses look, uh, to get people to come over and, hey, yeah. try out my sauna, please. Yes, yes. <laughs> And they, I was on Amazon. It looks like that one uh, is discounted down to about six grand. Um, but they're pretty neat. I, I, I think that's uh, super. Yeah. <laughs> Walking out to the pool and you go, oh, my gosh. When you come out of the pool, go right into the sauna. Yeah. Oh, and Man. then, oh, yeah, look at that. If you live in an apartment, there's a, there's a <laughs> closet-sized sauna. Oh. Of course, of course there is. Wow, almost heaven saunas. saunas now this is, I'll be uh, honest, this is something that I see saw a lot at uh, the Texas State Fair, is these uh, indoor saunas that you could just kind of plop down anywhere. Um, so, but these look very, very nice. It's very cool. Well, well, did you get a price on any of them? No, because I, I, I walked right by prices. and just oh. was like, oh, cool, <laughs> I'm not going to have it. Uh, I didn't. I didn't actually do any. Uh, Right. Wow, this is quite nice. Wow. Yeah. It almost looks like you could uh, put stuff in it, and then when you want to have a sauna, just throw everything out on the floor. <laughs> that's, a, that's, pull- that's a sign that you, you may be a hoarder. If your first thought is, we could, <laughs> we could store stuff in that and then take it out in order. Guilty, guilty. <laughs> exactly. That's. Me too. Guilty. Oh my gosh! I oh, when yeah. I got my house, I went. Uh, this garage is huge. I'll never fill it. Now it's totally filled. And not enough space to put anything else in there. Can't fit my car in there. Uh, oh yeah. So, yeah. No. Guilty and I was talking start. to someone who's worse than me about that, and I said, "But this is back when I had a, a one of those tiny little washer dryer things, you know, on a rack, uh, apartment size." And I said, I, "I don't know where I can put stuff anymore." And he said, "Well." Are you storing anything in the washer and, and in the in the dryer? And I'm thinking, you know, they have empty spaces in t- inside of them when you're not using yeah, them. Yeah, I'm thinking, <laughs> no, I don't think that's the most logical place to put stuff. <laughs> that is very funny. That is, it, it's also funny because it's so true. Because <laughs> I've been there, like, oh man, I had an LA apartment and it did not have enough square footage. So I absolutely know uh, that feeling. My kitchen became my storage room. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the same in in the Disneyland. The kitchen yeah. is just floor to ceiling uh, shelving. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, but I, the, if you have money to throw around, the, that is pretty neat. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, like, and, and the final guy is the most unbelievable gadget that. You you didn't know this existed, and when you see it, you might go, well, that is pretty neat, but do I need this much technology in an umbrella? Okay. <laughs> so let's watch. Okay. T.T. Bartolo, Mads, Mads, Strider, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. This is really great because we always do a CES look ahead. Well, this is a gadget that's coming to CES 2018. And we have Armin here who just happened to invent it. Is that right? Yes, we're a robotic startup based in California. And uh, our mission is to improve human life outdoors. And what you're looking at is the world's first autonomous robotic shading system that follows the sun. It collects solar energy, transfers that to power, and then basically closes, opens by itself. But it's much more. It's an AI module living outside your home. It has an app that controls the device. So at the core, you're looking at an artificial intelligence robot that's going to live outside your home. Is going to protect you from the sun. Uh, it'll it has a security camera on board. Uh, you can speak to it. You can listen to music through its speakers. And obviously, you, you can also see what the camera is seeing. Absolutely, you can see uh, what the camera is seeing. Basically, you can see it either through your application or you could see it through another device in your home. Uh, our mission is basically to create an an artificial intelligence hub out outside your home. And for us. 
the Parasol was the most logical product to integrate all these technologies into. Oh, this is amazing. And, and now, sometimes it tilts, so it would tilt to follow the sun, mm -hmm. but if you were sitting there and you wanted to tilt it, is that a function of a Absolutely. remote control? Absolutely. You can ask it to move. You can say, sunflower, rotate right. You don't need to touch it, basically. So the whole goal about creating a robot outdoors is that we had to think about, first and foremost, the, the conditions of weather, uh, but also it's the, the ease, the use case. How, how do people engage with robots? How are they going to interact? They don't want to hold their phone, they're barbecuing, they're gardening. They don't necessarily want to engage with their devices. So it had to be convenient. They have to speak to it. So, You know, before that goes back up, are these the solar panels? Yes. That is really, and so when the sun comes up, it'll just by itself? By itself, absolutely. Yes, and when the wind picks up, it already will recoil by itself. You do not need to touch it. You do not need to close it because it knows the wind is at a specific speed. It has sensors on board for carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane. It understands the exact UV rating in that microclimate where you're at. <laughs> This is really great. It's hard to take them seriously oh, so okay. much. I even know, though a cameraman right, wants to know. It does, okay. of course, yes. But um, you know, for us, we started the first ones with uh, the iconic white because that's how we started. But it will be absolutely available in multitude. You have to do black for New York City. For sure. Um, all right. Well, this is. Do you have? Is there a price point yet? We haven't established the price as of yet, but we'll release it in a couple of months. Okay, so uh, at CES 2018, we can fill in the blank, but for now, that's Shadecraft's Sunflower. Dick Bartolo, Man's Madest Writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Oh, the sun's not in my eyes. Bye. <laughs> They got the perfect I, uh, guy to also just yeah, yeah, deliver I, I, every single one of those. Yes, this is an artificial I, I intelligence umbrella that right. checks so the methane levels. So when it senses methane, what does it do? <laughs> it Close flaps. and run away? It flaps to get it away. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe it, that's it. Maybe, yeah. So oh it has GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, high-definition camera, voice activation, voice control, speakers for your to stream your audio, controlled lighting, charges external electronic devices, and it's, it's all it's incredible. Uh, solar the thing power. is, okay. So here, first impression. Let me just say it is: <laughs> it's hard to take seriously. At the same point, it is one of the coolest things in the world <laughs> that I've ever seen. And then it flips right back around to it's an umbrella. You know, it's a sunshade. <laughs> it it the mission that the company kind of has in mind of. You know, an autonomous AI module that lives outside your house and changes depending on the weather and has so many sensors is is really cool. And then you look at it and it's an umbrella that's changing and yes, moving with the wind. Yes, yes, I, I know, I it's know. Like, it's it, such it, a weird it, dynamic of, wow, that is cool. And also, that is really goofy. Like yeah, it it's so it it boggles the mind almost. What, what would your what would your guess be that this will that what what do you think they will announce as the price at CES? <laughs> it, it, I, I I have a guess. It has to be over five thousand. Has to be. Oh, uh, we're very close. Uh, that was that was me too. Uh, 5,000 and they go, well, do you want the, uh, CO2 detector too? Uh, yeah. do you want the, uh, USB charging? Do you want the voice activation? We can get you everything that you want for $8,888. Yeah. Uh, I'm you know, I could you, see it, them selling this to a resort. Yeah. Yeah. Where people would come out and go, Oh, whoa. Wow, the sunshade is autonomous. Please, sunflower, um, a little more to the right, please. Thank you. Yes. you no, the other meter. right. Yeah. Wait, is it the umbrella right or is it my right? <laughs> Don't make fun of it. It'll collapse on you. Yes, um, it'll slam shut, right? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's, that is incredible. It, it, I mean, it really... Uh, <laughs> Leo Laporte would be the perfect person to buy it. Yes! This thing. yes. <laughs> I mean... Did, so it's like the way I came up with five thousand was one thousand for the design. Could be a dumb umbrella, but it looks good. Another thousand for the for the uh, solar panels. 
another thousand for the AI, another thousand for all the sensors, and another thousand because it might come in different colors. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just incredible. Um, <laughs> what do you say? I know. I, I just exactly what you said is when he's talking about it for a minute, you think, why do I need a CO2 detector in this umbrella? Yeah. I'm already outdoors. Yeah. You know? Oh, I forgot to mention a, a, one of those thousands was for the uh, voice activation. Oh, yes. This is the video that they've made. A thousand dollars for this video. Is it so and it has a camera? I forgot about that too. It's a security device. Yeah. I have a feeling that it'll it'll see you and then know where you are and then shade you. Oh, you know what? You're probably right. You're probably right. You can touch it, but you don't have to. That's wow. Um, I know. I know. Yeah. I, my my guess is that they started with an umbrella that shifted with the with the sun and then they said well you know we should make it yeah, bluetooth and i said thing, well we yeah. should put a sensor in it for fire detection and yeah <laughs> oh, no. you know what we should give it a personality really i mean why yeah stop there um it's anyway. fascinating it's just i just want it to learn more and 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 then also that, that, the fact that there is no price makes it also like well, possibly, possibly, possibly it'll be able to, I'll be able to afford it. Probably yes. not. Oh, the other thing, I, I, I wonder if they're figuring, let's see how much interest there is. And yeah. if people are saying, oh, I have to know, I, I, let me know the minute you build one, then they'll go, oh, we can charge a lot. Or I just realized too, say, they're, they're two biggest, uh, um, um, I don't know, people to buy them. Two biggest accounts that will buy these. Yes. Uh, number one, Apple. And number two, Google. Oh, ye oh yes. You could imagine these on, on every picnic table around Apple and Google. Oh, yes, we have the smart shade here. On the campus. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, they'll, they'll get the price because they'll buy uh, five dozen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whew. Okay, the Sunflower Sunshade, you can find more at uh, Shadecraft.com. Shadecraft.com. And the, and the guy says they're only going to make uh, 1,000 for, I think, something like that. A very limited number for 2018. So I think that's a good uh, idea get, on their part. Get on that list. <laughs> I already put us on, Chad, so you don't have to worry. Oh, great. Oh, fantastic. That's wonderful. Great. Yeah. Because I was, any price, I was going to buy it. Any price. Oh, I know you were. I know yeah, you were. Absolutely. I know you were. <laughs> okay, with that, I think it's time. Oh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Chad's. Oh, it's very quiet. There we go. It's crappy corner. <laughs> Get it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you the fi finished product after my video. This is the packaging of the product that I had to open up to record the video. So. Let's jump straight in to my video on the last Halloween gadget for this month. Take it away, me from the past. Hey Diggity, so we're here with today's Halloween gadget and it is the Star Wars BB-8 pumpkin set. You get a pumpkin, you put these things on it, and then you have a little pumpkin BB-8. So first, we need a pumpkin, so let's go to the pumpkin patch. Hey Diggity, so we're here at a local pumpkin patch. Uh, it's a fantastic, it's getting close to dusk, so we're gonna go find a pumpkin for our uh, little android. So now we have our pumpkin with the magic of time travel and uh, video editing. And now let's go ahead and open up the set. The first step is to paint the pumpkin with the white paint included into the set. Here are all of the pieces. You get some side pieces, you get a little BB-8 topper, and you get some paint with a little foam paintbrush in order to open up the paint. Take these 
comedically sized scissors and then cut it open. Let's apply it. So the first layer. <clears throat> oh my god, you have to paint the entire pumpkin? Yeah! This is the pumpkin after the first coat. Oh my As you god. can see, it's still pretty orange. And there, we still have a lot of paint left, so I'm gonna paint a second coat on this pumpkin. So the second coat has been applied, although I realize that the stem probably shouldn't be here. There's no instructions, um, so I'm just trying to make as shallow of a cut as I can just to get rid of the stem now. There we go. Okay, stem has been removed. Okay, so finished painting. I did, I would say almost three and a half coats um, to get it this white. Uh, there was plenty of paint. I, I was I assumed that there wouldn't be enough paint in this, but there's plenty of paint inside of uh, this right here. Um, it's basically empty now. So let's go ahead and attach all of the little things. First is gonna be the little BB-8 head. And because we removed the uh, stem, this should go on pretty, <laughs> I guess, there we go, there we go. Now it, has, it doesn't really have a lot of pumpkin to catch into. Let me use a little knife to get out a little hole for it. So basically the stick that they gave you with wasn't quite long enough. Oh, long now enough, right now, yeah. It's still a little bit wet, so there we go. Little BB up. Eight pumpkin head. Hey, Waffles. Uh, now well, we have waffles getting frightened. The side pieces. Waffles, get out of here. Um, <laughs> and these could just go right on into somewhere on the side. So let's just kind of aim right here. They're supposed to be kind of like more in the front. Let me start a little area. There we go. Have a little hole started. And then let's shove it right in. Well, it feels pretty good. Okay. Let's start another one right over here, say. There we go. Doesn't have to look pretty because this is pretty large in order to hide it. And there we go. We have our little BB-8 pumpkin. Uh, it's still a little bit wet, so I'm going to wait a little bit until uh, I pick it up. But I would say, all in all, that looks pretty similar to the pumpkin that we were trying to go for. I'd say it looks pretty good. The white turned out okay. And he looks okay. Awesome. Back to you in the studio. So I was trying to figure out kind of what the paint was. I assume that it's a water-based latex paint. Uh, it's just kind of what it smelled like. Um, but here's the finished pumpkin. I kind of moved the head around. He was he kind of had like a, he was kind of poking out of the top there when we recorded the video. But uh, I kind of moved the head into a different location so he can kind of move around. Oh, the head moves around? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. You can just kind of rotate it whichever way you want. I'd say it's okay. It didn't blow me away. I don't think it's going to be winning what any did it awards. Cost? Uh, ten dollars for the set. Oh, so it wasn't too bad. Now it did take me about forty-five minutes of painting. It did take me a, a quite a long time uh, to finish all the painting um, because of all the different layers that I had to do because it was just a very very thin paint. In the end, though, I think that it kind of came came together. That first coat, I was really worried. I was like, well, I don't know how this is gonna look. This is gonna look pretty bum. Um, but yeah, in the end, I think it, if, if you have a BB-8 fan in the family, um, that this would work just fine and sit on your porch just fine. Also because you're not cutting into it uh, too much, I mean, other than the stem, which I was confused that there wasn't any instructions on how to get rid of the stem um, for the, uh, for anyway, but, uh, because you only cut out the stem, I assume that this will not rot as fast as a pumpkin. Oh, that that's was, interesting. That's that was interesting. Like cut into. But yeah, another just a little funny thing about the packaging is that the um, the the pumpkin that they decided to use in the instructions is obviously a fake pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> they grabbed a plastic pumpkin and then painted a plastic pumpkin. Oh, and then I'm that's funny. I'm almost positive that that is all photoshopped on there. Uh, that last little, like those two steps right there, that they totally just photoshopped uh, that uh, together. But yeah, uh, I picked this up at Target, so very easy to find, uh, just $10. And, um, pretty, you, you know, you did product. better because I just looked on Amazon. It's 20 to $22 on Amazon. Wow. So $10 is, is yeah. good. 
Uh, what a lot of people will do is if there's a product exclusive to Target, like Target worked with Disney to make this uh, set happen. So they'll go buy it at Target and then resell it on Amazon. Th that's probably <laughs> so what's happening. There's probably a reason that it's $26 on Amazon uh, instead of uh, just there at Target. So I'm, well, I'm, you know what? I think it's okay. <clears throat> yeah? I have a creepy gadget because of you. What? So do you still have your microphone? I do. I do have the mic. Here, let me go okay. grab it. Okay, so you, a uh, couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, Chad had this spooky microphone that you also found at Target, right? I did find this at Target. Yeah, okay, so I went to, I don't have a Target nearby, but I went to the Target website, and I ordered that microphone, and then it said, if you're buying this microphone, you also might want the spooky telephone. Ooh! Uh, dun, dun. So you cost me a lot of money. Dun, yeah, dun, dun, dun. Hang on. So wow. what you do is you dial the phone. Oh, 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 it has to be it has to be on the on the uh, hook first. And then you just dial it and oh, it's not going to ring for me now. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. And then you say, hey, it's for you. And then they pick up the phone. Come with me to the grave. <laughs> it has four. That's two. Hang it up. And then they have, oh, there's, there's one with real sound effects. Look behind you. <laughs> he really likes to laugh after he says his, his Yes, line. he does. Oh, and there's one with, with, with an old-fashioned... I don't um, know who you are. <laughs> I don't know why it's not playing out. With a, a, an old telephone operator who comes the in. The number you have reached is not in service. Oh, that's cool. Please check the number or try your call again. Yeah, that was... Yeah. <laughs> this is so that, and, and like your thing, it was like yours was fifteen dollars or something. Night, something spectacular. Yeah, I <laughs> I like the, the yeah. it's a nice yeah. design. It's, it's yes. Uh, and then also, I really like the lines. Sometimes you get these lines in them that you're just like, I've heard this before. This is the same Halloween line that you used two years ago. These seem. Yeah. New, no, these are fresh. And, and it's also from Hyde and Eek. I also like the name of the company. Yeah, Hyde, Hyde and Eek. And Hyde and Eek. So that's the telephone. And they are on uh, the website. They're twelve seventy five. Very Perfect. reasonable price. Yeah, exactly. Great for a Halloween party. Uh, yeah, if you have one. And then is yours motion activated as well, or is it just uh, phone? Uh, uh, well, let's see. The, uh, the 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 telephone is not motion activated. Okay. You you. Physically hit the dial yeah. and then that makes the noise. That's fine. But it's but as soon as they pick the receiver up, it automatically triggers the voice. Perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Awesome. Okay. I guess with that, let's jump into Dick's gadget, which is a spooky <laughs> intro. Not all the time, but it really works for Halloween. Dick's yes, it gadget warehouse. <laughs> They're geeky and they're goofy, together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In this gadget warehouse Log on. And our gadget warehouse is from Doug in New Jersey, who was visiting a computer show and found a gadget that's quite amazing. And when he talks about memory, listen to how much memory it is. So here's Doug's video. Hey, Dick and Chad. It's Doug from New Jersey here. I'm here to talk about a device that I saw, a gadget that I saw at a recent computer conference I was at. This has is definitely possibly the most expensive gadget ever featured on the Gizwiz. Ooh. I'm pretty sure it's the device which has traveled the farthest, and probably some of your listeners, depending on their age, may have actually helped pay for this. So the device I'm going to talk about today is the Apollo Guidance Computer. Oh my god! This gosh. particular one that was on display came from the Apollo 15 flight. This is from the command module. And <sighs> this is the compute section. Um, the other section, there was another section which contained the memory, and then there was another 
uh, uh, device which had the, um, the the actual navigation guidance system with the gyroscopes and the accelerometers in it. So, why did they need a guidance computer? Well, all the flights previous to this all were in Earth orbit, and the guidance was all done from the ground. But since the Apollo system module was going to be going further from Earth, and with the delays, they didn't want to have to do uh, communications with the ground for all the navigation. Also, there was a genuine concern that the Russians, because this was the Cold War, may have tried to uh, jam the signals and interfere with the success of the flight. So what was unique about this? Well, first of all, this was uh, one of the first general purpose computers. It wasn't specifically built just to be a guidance computer. Um, what are the what were the specifications on this? Well, it had 2K of RAM, which was actually a lot for the time, and 36K of ROM. And the unique thing about it, people say, oh, we, we, went, we go to the moon with the power of your watch. Well, your watch isn't controlling 150, over 150 devices. Um, and also takes input from a number of different devices. Um, so this was really a, a first in the computing. It was the first what we call fully preemptive multitasking computer. It could run multiple programs at the same time and prioritize the task. So it was capable of running five programs at the same time and for the sake of simplicity and performance each program would, ran for only a short amount of time and did a very specific task. For example, you may have been to fire thrusters or to orient the spacecraft. Um, the system was controlled. This controller here, which <clears throat> as you can see has uh, three different spaces. There's a space that has a display which would just show a status or a command and then there's a keypad which the astronauts got very good at typing on without looking at it and then on the right there there's there's an item which had a uh, uh, which would show three different numbers or letters which could indicate the attitude of the craft or the speed or something like that so what the astronauts do is they would run these programs for a very short amount of time uh, do things like uh, execute a thrust or, or, or turn on the radar or something like that. Uh, obviously the system worked very well as when they got to the moon and they did their manual uh, check on the guidance they were found to only be off by you know uh, a couple of hundred yards which was pretty good for the time. So um, that's my gadget that I wanted to talk to you about. That's the Apollo guidance computer. Uh, I also sent uh, uh, Dick a link to the full presentation from the Trenton Computer Festival, um, and uh, hopefully he can post that in the show notes so that people can take a look at that if they are interested. Um, thanks a lot, and uh, have a great day, y'all. That is way too cool. Oh, it's pretty neat. Gosh. Although, if yeah. I was in outer space, I don't think I would want to hit the number pad and without looking. When he said, <laughs> and they got so good at it, they didn't even have. I didn't have to look at it. Yeah, oh you know, gosh. did I hit a nine? Because yeah, now we're going that... to Mars. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Totally. But how about that? What was it a uh, two uh, uh, th two K? Two K was, was one section of memory, and then the ROM was. 28 K or something. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, here's and the, the thing is like a, like a by. suitcase. It is. I mean, in, to be honest, it looks small for, for the time. And yeah, for, that's you're right. You know, I mean, just like, Holy cow. I remember, um, listening to, they had the audio of what was going to the astronauts and it was going on in the control room and they would, um, transcribe. This is, this is you know, during that, um, uh, Apollo mission, and they would also tell you what some of the codes that they'd be saying. So they might say, uh, you know, code 52, and, you know, then they'd keep moving. And so you could click on that and find out what it was. I totally forget which website that was. Um, but one of the codes that they kept saying, kept saying, um, I clicked and tried to find out. And it was, the computer crashed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the computer crashed. And it crashed like 12 times or something like that. But the computer w was designed, this, and I assume it's this uh, guidance computer, it was designed in such a way that it could crash and then restart exactly where it had like left off. So it would crash, oh, but nice. then it would like reboot and then 
be back to where it was. You know, it was like, it was not that big of a deal at all that, um, that it would stop and start in order to get this done. I mean, just in, it, it really does just boggle the mind that we got to the moon on such basic, yes, like such basic stuff. Um, and then also just <laughs> 2048 bits is, is how, <laughs> how much. And like, when you think of like a character, like the letter A is like two bits or like three, four bits, something like that. Um, you can really see how little they had to work with. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah. And it really is amazing that the moment that technology was there, that the moment that we had enough technology to pull it off, it seems like we were doing it. it you know, yeah, the, that's, the yeah. second that we had enough computer power to get to the moon, we were there. Um, because, I mean, we were just right there on, on the bleeding edge of uh, what And we some brave off. people, when, when you're getting the rocket, and they go, now the computer's going to crash in a lot. A lot. But don't, don't worry, because it's going to come back. It could take a minute. It could take an hour. <laughs> yeah. But it will always come back. Oh and we won't God. be able to be in touch with you. <laughs> yeah. So God willing, we'll see you yeah, exactly. somewhere in the future. Yeah, that yeah. is just pretty amazing. So, so the link will be in the show notes. Uh, the computer is owned by uh, InfoAge.org, uh, so I'll put that link in there too. And uh, we thank Doug for finding this at I think he said the Trenton uh, Computer Show. Uh, uh, pretty neat. He's right. It is the old. It is the, certainly the most expensive. <laughs> Probably a trillion uh, yes. dollars worth of computing. Uh, yes, I'm like, sure. <laughs> I, I think it was actually more than the umbrella. Yeah, I'm just a little guessing. Bit. I'm just more. guessing it was more yeah. than two of those umbrellas. Isn't that incredible? Uh, we have an umbrella nowadays that could get us to the moon. <laughs> yeah, basically. that umbrella probably has more memory than, uh, <laughs> than this. See, actually, these days, they put the rocket on top of that umbrella, yeah. and they hit they hit charge, and the umbrella opens really fast yeah. and shoots that rocket into right, space. Into, right into, into space. That is an incredible, incredible video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so Doug, Doug, Doug gets thanks. a copy of Mad, gets one of those 35 year old Alfred E. Newman pictures, and uh, we're looking for more videos. I think that might be the last video that we have from um, a viewer. So, I mean, I have lots of stuff here in the warehouse, here at the warehouse, a block from here. Uh, but if you want to send in a video, can be anything that involves a gadget. Like, uh, this is kind of new that Doug did a, a, a great talk about a gadget he doesn't own, but a gadget that we're all fascinated by. So make a video, two to three minutes, involve a gadget, tell us what you know about it, and then put it on YouTube. You can click unlisted when it, when you hit upload, there's a drop down menu. Uh, if you hit unlisted, only people who have the URL can go there to see it and send that URL to us at mail at gizwiz.tv, mail at gizwiz.tv. And if you live in the U.S. or Canada, you'll be getting a, a Mad Magazine and an Alfred E. Newman picture uh, for your video if we show it. And we pretty much have been showing about 99% of all the videos we get. Uh, so thank you. Perfect. And get going. Hey, where's your mom? Hey, get mom. You, mom. Hey, Make we've been looking for a mom. video. Go hey, through the, the first of the year. It's the first of the year. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be sending out because Mad will be gone. I have no mail room. I have no place to go lift copies of Mad. Oh, I have no cabinet full of Alfred E. Newman pictures. Uh, so get those videos in soon. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, an era of Alfred E. Newman pictures will be, will be over. So get your videos in now if you want them. Um, with that, let's jump on into the letter. And this is from Ed. And Ed says, Dick, here's an item I think you'll be interested in. 
the Cameon Bluetooth LED glasses that display messages, animations, and drawings. Wow. And there it is. It's 69 bucks. That is. And I did a lot. I did a little search and I actually found an ad for it from the company. So let's take a look at the ad and see what it does. <laughs> Those that look really cool, don't they? That looks way neat. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Now they are 69 bucks. They Worth are it. on Worth it. on Amazon. A uh, few of the reviews said that the uh, batteries, you know, they're, they're a little weird because each of the back of the frames of the battery uh, of the uh, eyeglasses hold a AAA battery. So it has two AAA batteries, but people said you don't notice them too much because they're more or less at the back of your head. Um, I know of two modes. One mode is text where you can type short messages and the glasses can remember five messages and you can cycle through them. My favorite is equalizer mode where if you're at a dance club, uh, the, the LEDs will bounce up and down to the beat and the volume of the music. Um, so they're pretty neat. Yeah. So if someone wants to buy a pair and do a video oh for the gosh. show, be our guest. To be honest, yeah. it looks like something that would be so fun to also take apart. And, uh, you know, you've seen the Daft Punk, Punk heads, how they have LED stuff in them. Throw a pair of these glasses in uh, your own car. Well, if, 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 if Padre gets word of this, he'll, he'll do it on know-how. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> so, Ed, thank you. You are indeed right when you said, I think this is an item you guys will be interested in. Yeah. Yeah, this definitely. is this is this probably has more power than uh, that computer that went to Mars. Right? <laughs> I think it does. In order to have five messages, absolutely yeah, more five memory. messages. Five messages. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. <coughs> very cool, very very cool Ed. Okay. And the link, yeah, the link to the commercial and the link to the glasses will be on uh, on uh, gizwiz.biz. What is also on gizwiz.biz and we're getting to the last moment when you can join what the heck is it head on over to gizwiz.biz click what the heck is it here on the side and play the game that is what the heck is this gadget you see a gadget you don't know the name but you have to describe what it does and what its function is and it's pretty obvious to me that uh, this is a sandal for people who like pain. Um, it's a painful sandal um, for, for those in your life that just, you know, they don't want a comfortable experience. Uh, there's 12 Mad Magazines for correct answers, 24 Double the Mad Magazines for funny, hilarious, clever, or interesting answers. So get a guessing, this is your last moment. If you're hearing this right now, you can't guess again, we'll have a new uh, What the Heck Is It at the start of next month. And this is what you'll be winning, this Mad Magazine, Stranger Things, the hit Netflix show that took everybody by storm. Um, so please get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. Also, big thanks to our patrons over at patreon.com. Yes, yes. um, Big, big, big thanks to you guys. You guys support the show every single episode. You guys are amazing. Patreon is the place for you to support independent content creators. And hey, we're an independent content creator. So patreon.com slash gizwiz is our Patreon page. Uh, if you enjoy the show, if you like the show, if you want to give back to the show, please support at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Also, if those 
of you who don't want to do a reoccurring payment, you can head on over to gizwiz.tv. That is where the show lives, um, where the episodes can be downloaded. Uh, and then click the Patreon tab, and then there will be a uh, Gizwiz.tv. That sometimes happens when I go to Gizwiz TV live on the show. Hit the Patreon tab, and there's a, a PayPal link underneath the Patreon uh, banner. Hey, if you want to watch the show live, you can do so at around 4.30 uh, Pacific Time, 7.30 Eastern Time. Every Thursday, we should be back on track. You can join the chat room right below. If we're not live, you'll see the latest episode there. You can also subscribe on iTunes or YouTube, and you can also see all of our past shows right there on the website. That about wraps it up for this episode of the Gizwiz. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. I'll be here.